This audio fiction is recorded for an adult audience. It may contain scenes of explicit sex, violence and disturbing supernatural entities. Listener discretion is recommended. Come, lend me your ear, as I speak to you of the macabre, the cursed, the maligned, the malignant, the possessed, and the downright demonic. (coughs) Bolt all doors, lock all windows. Are you alone? Are you sure? I suggest you check under the bed, carefully, twice. Baratanak, a new darkness at the world's edge. (sighs) The Abyss. January 17th, 2017. The side gate slammed at Declan's back. He leapt forward as if ambushed, then turned to see the large sign spelling, Beware Hungry Guard Dogs. On the road, he paused by the house's faded wooden sign, Le Papillon. The tall, dense hedge had tried to consume it, just as the pruned bushes concealed the property from the vehicles that ploughed the road between Bridgetown and Bathsheba. He smiled, the name thrilled him, conjuring Henri Charrier's accounts of surviving Devil's Island, a malarial penal colony in the jungles of French Guiana, not too far away. Since arriving in the Caribbean, he had twice entertained the idea of flying to Cayenne, then on by boat to the site of the old prison, to see the places famous to him from the first book his grandmother ever bought him. Behind the hedge, The sound of the gardener's radio trailed away listlessly as Declan walked on his path to the beach. Barbados was once a hell worse than Devil's Island, he thought, as the radio died completely, replaced by the parched hum of the surrounding woodland. Just out of sight, around a bend, a gloomy ravine cut through the mountain. Declan had felt its dark presence from the day he arrived. On a few occasions, from a lookout platform at the back of the property, he had seen smoke snaking skywards from its thickets. A small steep path nearby plunged into the jungle below, inviting him to discover the origins of the burning. Things live there, he had thought on his first walk to Bathsheba Beach. Dead things. Some days the air was so heavy he chose to pass by beyond the far side of the road, his feet earthed on the island's soil rather than the soft, trespassing tarmac. Is that sulphur? he asked himself, stopping abruptly. The hairs on his neck prickled. His nostrils flared, sampling the air that swept up the ravine. Now it's gone. Perhaps it was the hot bitumen. Just forget about what's happening down there, Mama Myrtle, an elderly neighbour, had warned. Stay well away. They had crossed paths on one of his walks, and he had asked about the smokestacks. Mama Myrtle's brown, bird-like face beamed with her West African roots, native carob cheekbones, and red leg Irish freckles that dotted her cheeks, like many Bathsheba locals. Though they had never spoken before, he already recognised her from the times he had spied her bathing further down the beach in the morning rock pools, naked as the day she was born. 
She was as nimble as a nymph in the water, and, being bald as a cooch, she flowed through it. You don't grow fruit or crops down there in the ravine, Declan had asked the remarkably unlined woman, while wondering if she was yet another of the youthful centenarians that dwelled on the surrounding hillsides. It's my land, but it's never been good for growing anything, she replied, her pixie-like eyes shining as she smiled. Too many noisy people buried down there. I leave them well alone, and they know to leave me alone. No sign of Mama Myrtle today, Declan thought, as he glanced sparingly into the ravine. Pushing past, he felt its disturbing gravity pull at his eyes. He grimaced at the sight. Treetops shuddered and leaned conspiratorially in a breeze that moaned up the V-shaped valley. Declan's darker fears about the foul crack in the hillside had been validated just the day before, when he overheard a solemn staff conversation in Andromeda Gardens, the local arboretum. One of the employees, an English lady, had avoided having a terrible accident on the way to work that very morning. Her voice still betrayed her shock. Yes, that's exactly the same spot where the bus went off the road, dragging most of the passengers to their deaths, said her colleague. You're lucky you managed to stop. I know this sounds crazy, but I felt hands grab the wheel. That's exactly what Mama Myrtle heard the bus driver say after he gained consciousness. She was passing by when it happened. Hmm... Did she say if the bus driver mentioned an overpowering smell, like rotten eggs? The English lady had asked as Declan's ears pricked up. No, she didn't. That's a new one. Hmm, it was very distinct. Sulphur. I was coughing from it when I seized back the wheel. How unusual. So, I didn't imagine it, Declan had thought as he savoured the last drops of the cafe's ginger-lime concoction. His further efforts to write in Andromeda Gardens proved fruitless. He stuffed his bag with his laptop and books, then weaved his way through several tables of sunburnt tourists. Thank you for listening. If you have enjoyed this episode, then please subscribe. I must leave you now, but do not despair. If you listen to the next instalment, the curse cannot harm you, but you must believe. Now pull the blanket over your head and be quiet. You are not alone. Shh.